Again, uh, the part one of this correction is institutional correction. Okay. But uh, before we go to the part one, uh, do you know what is the difference between institutional and non-institutional correction? Do you have any idea what is the difference between institutional and non-institutional correction? Yes, po. Yes, what is it? Yung mga institutional ma'am, correction ay yun nag nagaano ka ng sentence mo sa loob ng prison, jail, mga ganun. Tapos mm -hmm. yung ito, yung mga institutional, ay yun yung mga nakakuha ng mga parol, ganun po. Okay, very good. So, institutional and non-institutional. From the word itself, institutional. Kapag institutional sila, ibig sabihin, magsaserve sila ng kanilang punishment or sentence sa loob ng kulungan. Okay, ito yung mga jail or prisons natin. Kapag sino ba na, sinabi naman nating non-institutional, we're talking about the punishment or penalty are being served outside the jail or prisons. Saan po yun, ma'am? Kasama ng community. Pwede pala yun, ma'am? Yes, pwedeng pwede po. Okay? Dalawa ang system kasi or dalawa ang correction natin dito sa Pilipinas. It's either institution, makukulong ka nga sa loob ng kulungan or jail or prison, or non-institutional, isaserve mo yung sentence mo or punishment mo outside the jail. Okay, ayan. Institutional, the reformation and rehabilitation of criminals, offenders are held inside a correctional institution or penal establishment. While non-institutional, the reformation and rehabilitation of criminal offenders are provided in the community or outside the prison. So, what are the example of institutional? Ito yung mga BGMP, TSWD, BUCOR, the jails and prisons. Ayan, ito yung mga nakikita nyo yung kulungan talaga. Sa so, non-institutional naman, ito yung mga programs. We have the parole, probation, executive clemencies. Ang non-institutional, pag-uusapan po natin siya next week. Ayan. So, first, what is the difference between correction, penology, and penal management? So, those terms kasi lagi nyo makikita yan. Hanggang fourth year na kayo, hanggang mag-board exam kayo. Ngayon, anong pinagkaiba ng correction, penology, and penal management? Ayan. So, dito muna tayo kay correction and penology. Correction, it is a branch of criminal justice system. Am I right? Is it a branch and a pillar, ang correction? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes diba? Ito na nga yung pinagdi-discuss natin ngayon, correction pillar. How about penology? Okay. Penology, it is a branch of criminology. It means it is a study. Ayan, diba? So, sa correction na pinag-uusapan natin dito, the custody, responsibility for the custody, supervision, and rehabilitation of the convicted offender. O offender, it means parang... Um, Doon sa mismo, ano yung mga system natin? Ano yung administration natin? Ay, ano yung program? Ano yung mismo ang uh, ginagawa nila inside the correctional correction pillar? In penology, this is a branch of criminology. We're talking about the study. Okay, ano yung study niya? A penal science for prison management and treatment of offenders, prevention through punishment. Ano yung mga pagbibigay ng punishment or ano yung katumbas? Ano ba yung magagawa ng punishment to correct the people? Ito yung penology. We're talking uh, sa penology this is very general or parang international kasi dito uh, pag-aaralan natin yung mga iba't ibang system not only here in the Philippines but also uh, with the other countries with their penology. Parang pinag-aaral natin dito what is the best punishment or what would be the uh, tawag dito pros and cons of the uh, punishment in to the criminal. Ayan. So, penology defined, the study of punishment, ayan, for crime or of criminal offenders. So, it includes the study and control and prevention of crime through punishment of criminal offenders. So, the term derived from the Latin word poena or pina. Okay, pina ang basa dyan. Ano ibig sabihin ng pina? Which means pain or suffering. Ayan. Penology is otherwise no otherwise known as penal science, actually a division of criminology that deals with the management and treatment of offenders. Bakit po ba natin kailangan pag-aralan yung penology, ma'am? Why do you think so? Bakit sa tingin nyo kailangan meron tayong specific uh, branch ng criminology na tinatawag nating penology? 
Anyone? Hello? Anyone? Okay, kailangan natin pag-aralan yung penology kasi uh, it will help us to uh, give uh, to give our own administration in correction a proper uh, punishment. Diba? Kung kasi hindi natin pag-aaralan yung mga punishment at saka yung effects niya when it comes to criminal, what will happen? Baka hanggang ngayon, barbaric system tayo. Ano yung barbaric system natin? Sa so, tingin yung barbaric, alam yung pinaparusahan ka sa silya elektrika, pinaparusahan ka through flogging, pinaparusahan ka through banishment, ganyan. Yun ang, yun ang kinagandahan ng penology. Kung hindi natin pag-aaralan yan, then therefore siguro, hindi nagkakaroon ng human rights or parang walang rights yung mga accused, walang rights yung mga nasa loob ng kulungan. So kahit anong punishment ibibigay natin sa kanila, kahit yung katulad pa nung dati. So penalty has stood in the past and for the most part still stands for the policy of inflicting punishment on the offender as a consequence of his wrongdoing. Okay, next. Correction. Okay, what is the meaning of correction? So, a correction is a branch of criminal justice system concerned with the custody, supervision, and rehabilitation of criminal offenders. So, it is the field of criminal justice administrations which utilizes the body of knowledge and practices of the government and the society in general involving the processes of handling individuals. So, sino po ba yung uh, nahandled natin sa correction? Ano ang tawag natin sa kanila? Ano yung, sino, convicted po. Convicted? Ano pa? Merong specific term eh. Ano yung tawag natin sa kanila? Convicted? You can call them criminal? Okay. Makinig. Ang tawag natin sa kanila ay the person deprived of liberty. Makinig. We call them as person deprived of liberty or tinatawag natin silang PDL. Hindi nyo sila pwedeng tawagin kriminal, hindi nyo sila pwedeng tawagin uh, convicted. Sabi sa human rights, alam ko, uh, dapat tinatawag daw natin silang person deprived of liberty. Kasi yung word daw na criminal, okay, at saka yung word na convicted, parang nagkukosya ng uh, pamamahiya or parang criticism, ganyan, or judgment. That is why, um, parang hina, uh, pin, uh, inaalis daw yon yung word na yon para sa mga taong gumawa ng kasalanan. We call them as person deprived of liberty. Okay? Or PDL. Okay. Correctional administration. This is the study and practice of systematic management of jails or prisons and other institutions concerned with the custody, treatment, and rehabilitation of offenders. Okay. Is jail and prison the same? Hindi po. Ano pinagkaiba ng jail sa prison? Uh, prison po, mamay, yung mga ano, six years above na kaso and yung mm -hmm. sa yung pababa po. Six years above ba? Two years above. Hmm, nanguhula na yata kayo eh. Okay, three years above. Okay. Mamaya, pag-uusapan natin yan. Ngayon, paano ba pinag uh, Bakit ko in-insert ang jail at prison? Kasi, ang jail at prison, pinag-aaralan natin yan when it comes to this one, correctional administration. Ang tawag natin doon is correctional administration. So, pinag-aaralan natin ano ba yung mga uh, sistema sa jail, ano ba yung sistema sa prison. Ayan. So, this is the study and practice of systematic management inside the jail or prison. So, habang kasi pinapat, uh, habang tumatagal tayo, uh, dumadami yung mga nakakulong, dumadami yung mga PDL natin. So, they need to study ano yung mga, ano kayo yung best way, di ba, para ma uh, makorek sila na, at saka hindi sila maging or mapuno or congested sa loob ng kulungan. Ayan. Ang tawag doon, correctional administration. So, na next na naman is competent authority. What is competent authority? Or, who is competent authority? So, competent authority refers to the Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, or the any type of court, including 
Sandigan Bayan, House of Representatives, Senate, Commission on Election, Bureau of Immigration, and the Partition and Boards of Pardons and Parole. Yung competent authority, we're talking about to those authority na pwedeng mag-hear and try or mag-held ng uh, custody doon sa may kasalanan. Okay, for example, sa immigration, nakadetain siya sa immigration eh. Sabi nila ganyan. Or nakastop siya, naka, nasa custody siya ng immigration. Pag sinasabi natin competent authority, these are the agencies in the Philippines wherein meron silang karapatan na maglites doon sa kasalanan mo. Okay, yan yung mga competent authority. For example, COMELEC, di ba? Uh, kapag uh, ang COMELEC or when it comes to the... Uh, to the persons involved within elections kapag meron silang ini-investigate ano ang unang sino unang-unang mag-investigate yung COMELEC ayan yun mga tinatawag nating competent authority these are the different agencies that can um, investigate or hold a person liable to the act okay ayan wag na yun eto Commitment. What is commitment? So, it refers to entrusting for confinement of an inmate to a jail by competent authority for investigation, trial, or service of sentence. What is commitment? Okay, hindi yung commitment na commitment or committed ka sa isang tao. Ano yung commitment? Commitment, it means um, dadalhin ka. This is uh, what we call the act wherein they will entrust you to a confinement, if, uh, pwedeng jail, pwedeng detention jail, pwedeng lock-up jail, by the competent authority for investigation, trial, or service of sentence. Sino nga ulit yung tinatawag natin competent authority? Sino nga ulit? Mga may kakayang maglitis po. Mga uh, kakayang magmaylitis or magbigay ng Final judgment, diba? Oh, for example, sabi niya dito, ano sinatawag natin commitment? It refers to the entrusting for confinement of an inmate to a jail by competent authority. So, sino bumibigay ng commitment? Ang nagbibigay nito or gumagawa nito is yung mga competent authority kanina. Authority kanina na pinakilala ko. Yung mga court natin, yung mga COMELEC, Sandigan Bayan, or etc. Okay. Saan nila ginadala? Saan po nila dinadala yung convicted or nakita na lang uh, guilty? Saan nila dinadala? Sa isang confinement or jail. So, ibig sabihin, eto yung process na, for example, yung sa MTC, sinabi niya ni you are guilty beyond reasonable doubt, then, kapag i-entrust ka na nila, kapag sinabi nila na yung, oh, ikaw, M kanwari, MTC Lubaw yun, dinala ka nila sa MT, uh, sa municipal jail ng Lubao. Ganyan. Ibig sabihin, commitment ang tawag doon. Ayan. So, bakit nila nilalagay yung, uh, para sa ng commitment, ma'am? For investigation, for trial, or service of sentence. Either, it's either yung, uh, dahil guilty beyond reasonable doubt, that is service of sentence na. Pero, pwede rin naman, for example, yung COMELEC, pina, pinakuha ka niya, tapos, uh, pinadala ka niya under nung lock-up jail. For investigation yon or pwedeng for trial. So, that is what we call commitment. Parang inaaresto ka or parang kinukuha ka within the custody of the jails or any lock-up jails or detention cells. So, this is the other term for incarceration or imprisonment. That is commitment. Yan. Classification. So, more on definition of terms muna tayo bago tayo pumunta doon sa mismong seven uh, penal colonies at saka yung uh, jail sa... So, classification refers to the assigning or grouping of inmates according to their sentence, gender, age, nationality, health, and criminal records. A method by which diagnosis treatment, uh, planning, and execution of treatment programs are coordinate, coordinated to an individual. The process of assigning inmates to types of custody or treatment programs appropriate to their needs. Classification. Okay. Ano ang alam nyo kapag kinukulong ang isang tao? Di ba madami tayong mga cells? So, for example, sa bilibid, ang dami nating mga selda. Okay. Paano kaya nila malalaman kung saan sila ilalagay? 
sa tingin nyo? Paano? Depende po ma'am siguro sa ano po, sa ginawa po nilang ano, krimen. Okay, depende sa ginawa nilang krimen. Tama. Kasi, ano ang tawag doon? Ano ang tawag doon sa process na yon Yung inaalam nila kung ano yung crime niya, inaalam niya, uh, kung babae ba siya o lalaki siya, ang tawag doon, classification. Okay? Bago ka pumasok or bago ka nila dalhin sa loob ng kulungan, ikaklassify ka nila. As to your sentence, ano ba yung kasalanan mo? Reclusion perpetua ba? 20 years ba? 12 years ba? Tapos, gender mo? Lalaki ka ba? Babae ka ba? Meron na ba kayong nakitang lalaki at babae magkasama sa isang selda? Wala. Laging separate yan. Pati age, kasi baka bata ka pa lang. Baka matanda ka na. Yan. Pati nationality, kung Pinoy ka ba? Or baka naman uh, foreigner ka? Health, baka naman may nakahahawa kang sakit. Diba? Yun ang ginagawa nila as for the classification. Hindi yung porket dumating yung isang selda, maunang mapuno sa selda, yun na yung ilalagay nila. Hindi. Kinaklassify nila kung saan selda siya ilalagay. Yan, according to their gender, age, nationality, health, and most especially, yung criminal record. For example, magnanakaw siya. Siyempre, dadalin siya sa mga grupo ng mga magnanakaw. Sa tingin nyo, bakit kaya ako, for example, magnanakaw siya, tapos nilagay siya dun sa selda ng mga murderers? Ano sa tingin nyo ang magiging outcome nun? Kung hindi siya classify Bugbog. Bugbog? Ano pa? Ano sa tingin nyo yung pinaka-outcome? Bakit nakawan po, tapos patayin po siya. Nakawan, tapos patayin po siya. Ah, oh, to bigyan ito. Total sinabi yung nakawan tas patayin po. Pwede rin naman ganto ang mangyari sa kanya. Dahil magdanakaw siya, dinala siya sa the group of murderers do sa selda ng murderers, baka kalabas siya ng kulungan. Eh, hindi lang eh, hindi na lang siya magdanakaw. Mamamatay tao na rin siya. See the difference kung hindi nila ka-classify? Bakit? Syempre nakasama mo sa kulungan yung mga yan, anong pagkukuwentuhan nila? Kung paano sila gumawa ng crime? Diba? O, pinasok mo siya dun sa mga namamatay tao. O, hindi naman siya binugbog. Naging kakosa nila. What will happen in the next future? O, what will happen? Baka kalabas siya ng kulungan, hindi na lang siya simpleng magnanakaw. Mamamatay tao na rin siya. Nakita niya yon So, kinaklassify nila yan para nga wala din silang exchange of informations. Kasi nga, dapat nare-rehabilitate sila. Dapat nga, uh, nakakalimutan nila yung crime sa ginagawa nila kung paano nila gawin yun. Hindi sila makukulong para to gather the different uh, techniques or modus operandi on how to commit a crime. Yan. Yun, yun ang kagandahan ng classification. Okay. Hindi basta-basta na baka inisip nyo na basta mapuno na yung isang selda, ma'am, tapos po selda number to naman sila. Hindi. Kinaklassify sila according to that one. Next. So, this process is also known as diversification. Classification is also known as what we call diversification. It is usually done in reception and diagnostic center. So, ginagawa yung classification na yan during reception or kung kailan sila unang dating and diagnostic center or parang RD, yung RDC natin sa loob ng kulungan. Ayan. Sa reception, ibig sabihin doon, karating mo, ito yung magkikater sa iyo sa kanila ilalagay. Ayan. So, what is the difference between commitment order and mitimus naman? So, what is the difference between commitment order and mitimus? So, commitment order, this is a written order of the court or any other agencies authorized by law to issue and trusting an inmate to a jail for purposes of safekeeping during the pendency of his or her case. Ayan, that is the commitment order. So, um, Ito, ang commitment order, ito yung tinatawag natin na sa detention jail pa lang siya. Hindi pa siya magsaserve ng sentence dyan. Okay? Yun ang commitment order. So, parang uh, kinukuha ka for detention lang or lock up jails. So, mitimus. Ano naman ibig sabihin ng mitimus? A warrant issued by the court bearing its seal and signature of the judge directing the jail or prison authorities to receive inmates for the service of sentence. Ang mitimus naman, kapag binigyan ka na ng mitimus, it means this is 
uh, for the service of sentence or makukulong ka na. Alam nyo ba ang pinagkaiba ng lock-up jails doon sa mismong uh, jails na talaga ng BGMP at ng ating uh, Bureau of Correction? Ha? Can you see the difference? Oh, makinig kayo, ha? Hindi lahat ng nakukulong, eh, may final judgment na. Do you believe in that? Ha? La hindi lahat ng nakukulong, eh, may final judgment na. Do you believe in that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Diba? Hindi naman lahat na nakukulong may final judgment na. Yung iba, nakukulong sila dahil kailangan pa ng further investigation or trial. Okay? Ang tawag doon, doon sa warrant na binigay sa kanila, ang tawag doon, commitment order lang. Okay? Kapag ganun ang purpose mo, para ikukulong kanila for your own safety purposes, for just investigation, for just, uh, for just a trial, that is a commitment order. Pero kapag binigyan ka nila ng warrant para uh, mag-serve ng sentence dahil nandiyan na yung final judgment, ang tawag doon ay mitimus. Nakita yung pinagkaiba ng commitment order sa mitimus? Hello? Again? Kapag for the purpose of safe uh, entrusting an inmate for uh, safekeeping, or for a trial of the case, hindi pa naman talaga totally dahil to serve the sentence, that is what we call commitment order. Okay po. Pero, kapag ang binigay sa kanila ay mitimus, it means this is for the service of sentence. It means meron ka ng final judgment. You get it now? What's the difference between commitment order and mitimus? Yes, ma'am. Ano ba ginagawa natin sa detention jail, ma'am, or lock-up jail? Ito yung hindi ka nakapagpiyansa. Diba? Hindi ka nakapag-bail or hindi, wala kang karapatang mag-bail. Pero na-held in custody ka kasi nga magkakaroon ng investigation or trial sa'yo. Yun ang uh, mga nasa detention jail or lock-up jails. It means merong anytime pwede silang marilis. Hindi ka tulad ng kapag sa mitimus or service of sentence. Dito, sa mitimus or service of sentence, kailangan talaga tapusin mo muna yung uh, time or yung years ng service of sentence mo. Kung 12 years ka makukulong, 12 years bago ka makalabas. Yun ang mitimus. Okay, next. Ayan, no? Commitment order issued by competent authority or court. Mitimus issued only by the court. Kasi nga, ito may final judgment. Commitment order for detention only. Mitimus for service of sentence. Commitment order, the duration of this is non-fixed. Kasi nga, hindi mo alam kung kailan ka pwedeng lumabas. Sa mitimus, fix yan according to your sentence. Okay. Next. These are the any article, item, or thing prohibited by law or forbidden by jail rules. This is what we call the contraband. So, may mga bagay na bawal ipasok sa loob ng kulungan. So, ang tawag doon ay contraband. So, Operation Greyhound. Ayan. Operation Greyhound or Surprise Church. It aims to eliminate in all BGMP man facilities any form of contrabands that could have adverse implications on overall administration of facilities and to ultimately establish order in all jails. Okay, Operation Greyhound. Nakapanood na ba kayo sa TV nang bigla silang may inspection sa loob ng kulungan? Opo. Ayan. Kapag sa BGMP nila ginawa yun, ang tawag doon ay Operation Greyhound. This is what we call surprise search. Bakit kailangan surprise? Ha? Bakit kailangan surprise ang search nilang yan? Siyempre ma'am, baka may mga na-puslit ng mga kontrabandos niya, mga ganon. Kunwari yung kung mga deadly weapon, drugs. Mm. And... Bakit kailangan surprise? Para po hindi nila may tago. Para hindi nila may tago. Oh, yun lang yun. Okay? Again, that is what we call Operation Greyhound na ginagawa ng BJMP. Ayan. Siyempre kapag sinabi mo magsusearch ka ngayong gabi, anong gagawin nila? Baka ilulok na lang nila yung drugs. Tirahin nila agad yung drugs para maatago nila agad-agad. Yan. So, that is contraband. Ngayon, 
hindi ko alam kung na-discuss ko na to sa inyo dati, but we have two types of contraband, the illegal and nuisance. Okay? We have two uh, classifications of contraband, the illegal and nuisance. Anong pinagkaiba ng illegal sa nuisance? Ang illegal contraband, unlawful in themselves, katulad ng mga drugs, weapons, uh, potential weapons, and explosives. This is prohibited by the law. Yun ang mga illegal contraband. Kanwari, drugs. ba diba, bawal yung mga shabu, marijuana. That is illegal contraband. Sa, uh, pwede na rin yung mga, uh, bawal din yung mga, kanwari, paltek na guns, yung mga weapons na hindi naman license. That is what we call illegal contraband kasi pinagbabawal ng batas. Okay? Pinagbabawal ng batas. That is illegal contraband. Meron din tinatawag ta tayong nuisance contraband. Ito, hindi siya pinagbabawal ng batas. Nagiging bawal lang siya kasi bawal siya sa lugar na yon. Forbidden by jail rules kasi pinapabawal siya sa loob ng kulungan. Katulad ng liquors, cigarettes, pornographic materials, gambling, paraphernalia. Also, you can include the cellular phone or mobile phone. Bakit kaya bawal siya? Kasi it threatens the security. Can you see the difference? Yes po. Okay. For example, uh, uh, cellphone. Kapag ba nasa labas tayo ng kulungan, okay lang ba mag-cellphone? Opo, ma'am. Pero kapag nasa loob ka ng kulungan, nagiging nuisance Bawal po. Nagigets niya yung pinagkaiba ng illegal and nuisance. Pag illegal, just always remember, pinagbabawal siya mismo ng batas. Nasa kulungan ka man or wala ka man sa kulungan. Ang nuisance contraband, ito yung pinagbabawal lang siya sa loob ng kulungan. Sometimes, nuisance contraband, kanwari sa mall. Ano yung pinagbabawal na dalhin sa mall? Patalim. Patalim. Pet. Barrel. Samurai. Okay. So, yun yung mga nuisance contraband. Pinagbabawal lang nila because that specific place has their rules. Or yung sa jail rules nga natin. Eto, anong pinagkaiba ng shakedown sa Greyhound? Yung kanina sinasabi ko na surprise search, surprise search made by the BGMP, ang tawag natin doon, Opera Operation Greyhound. Diba? Ngayon, meron din kasi tinatawag na shakedown. Ano yung tinatawag na shakedown? Hindi yung shakedown na sumasayaw, ha? Ano yung shakedown? So, done before admitting an inmate. Search for contrabands done to in a regular basis. Ang shakedown, ito yung bago siya pumasok ng, or sa loob ng kulungan, lahat ng gamit niya at siya mismo, eh, che-check muna. Yun ang tinatawag nating shakedown. Ang grihang nangyayari siya kapag nasa loob ka na ng kulungan, tapos biglang magsusurprise, search sila. Ano ang purpose nila? Pareho lang for the search of contrabands. Do you get it now? The the difference between shakedown and greyhound? Yes, ma'am. Next. Ito. Meron din tayong tinatawag na conjugal visitation sa loob ng kulungan. So, this refers to the visit by the white wife for the short period, usually an hour, more or less, to her incarcerated husband during which they are allowed privacy and generally understood to have sexual contact. So, eto yung tinatawag nating conjugal visitation. Yung binibisita siya ng uh, kanyang asawang babae for alam nyo na, yung sexual intercourse. Ayan, for their love making. Pwede po ba yan sa loob ng kulungan? Yes, pwede. Yes, ma'am. Pwede. Okay. Kaso, pwede lang siya sa mga lalaki na uh, or male inmates. Hindi siya pwede sa mga babae. Why do you think so? Kasi po, baka mabuntis sa loob. Baka mabuntis. Tapos, syempre, kailangan pang alagaan sa loob ng kulungan. Kaya, binibigay lang yung conjugal visitation na yan doon sa mismong uh, male prisoner. Madaming ganyan, tapos nagbabayad pa sila sa loob ng kulungan para magkaroon ng privacy. Yan. Next. Minsan nga, alam nyo ba sa conjugal visitation, minsan sabay-sabay sila. Sa taas, meron mga ano doon, double decks. Ganyan sila. Tapos, bibigyan lang sila ng isang oras. Ang tawag doon ay conjugal visitation. Next. Deterrence. 
A crime control strategy that uses punishment to prevent from committing a similar crime. So, this is what we call deterrence. Ayan. Uh, madamit kasi tayong type of correction, di ba? Or punishment. Um, for example, sa bahay nyo na lang. Kung hindi ka paparusahan ng nanay mo, di ba? Ibig sabihin, parang pinagalitan ka lang niya. Minsan, wala, siya, wala tayong nagiging correction doon sa pagkakamaling ginawa natin. Pero kapag ikaw binigyan ng kaparusa ng nanay mo, ikaw ang gagawin mo. Di ba may tendency na hindi mo na yun uulitin? So, ganun din tayo sa crime control. Uh, Deterrence is a crime control strategy that uses punishment. Talagang ginagamit yung parusa, pagbibigay ng parusa, just to prevent the others from committing the similar crimes. Or, uh, ito yung pinapakita mo sa kanila na, o, oh, pinarusahan siya. So, therefore, hindi mo na siya pwedeng gayahin pa. That is what we call deterrence. Okay. Next. So, uh, the institutionalization, a crime strategy that focuses on keeping the offenders in the community rather than placing them in the long-term institution. Ito yung tinatawag nating the institutionalization or non-institutional correction. Okay, escape. So, an act getting out unlawfully from confinement or custody by an inmate. So, kapag tumakas ka sa loob ng kulungan, you are liable for the evasion of service of sentence under Article 157 of the Revised Penal Code. So, escape came from the Latin word scapio or escapion, which means by chance. Instrument of restraint. Ano yung mga natawag nating instrument of restraint? A device, contrivance, tool, or instrument used to hold back, keep in, check, or control an inmate. Handcuffs or leg irons. Instrument of restraint. Ito yung mga handcuffs. Ito yung posas. Leg irons. Yes, pwede. Nilalagyan nila dito. Or sometimes sa mga uh, foot at saka sa... Foot tuloy. Foot at saka sa kamay. Yan. Prisonization. Ayan. Prisonization process by which an inmate learns through socialization. So, the rules and regulation of the penitentiary culture called is as prisonization. Kapag natututo sila kung ano ginagawa nila sa kulungan, o ganto sila, ganto silang oras gigising, kakain, ganto gagawin nila, ito yung, ganto yung mga activities nila, ang tawag doon is prisonization. Ito yung socialization ng isang taong nakakulong sa loob ng kulungan. Prisonization. Okay, skip ko na lang muna yung iba. Wait lang ha. Okay, let's start. So, furlough. What is what we called furlough? This is the authorization that permits an inmate to leave containment for emergency family crisis, usually accompanied by a correctional officer crisis, including the death pet. So, ito yung furlough. Ano po yan, ma'am? Okay. Ito yung kapag nakakulong ka, tapos binigyan ka nila ng chance makauwi sa yung family kasi uh, mamamatay na dahil deathbed na or namatayan ka. Ayan. Pero meron tayong rules on furlough. Okay? Hindi lahat nakakapunta sa loved ones nilang namatay or malapit ng mamatay. Kailangan not more than 30 kilometers radius from the prison facility. So, for example, ang prison niya is... Uh, Diyan lang sa mismong Talabastagan, kailangan not more than 30 kilometers from Talabastagan. More than 30 kilometers, pwede rin naman na more than 30 kilometers, but you can return in daylight time. Kailangan siguraduhin na makabalik ka within that day. Next, duration is only for 3 hours only. Pwede kang pumunta doon at magsumilip for just the period of 3 hours only. Yan lang ang ating rules on furlough. So, bibigyan ka naman nila ng chance na makita yung namatay mong kamag-anak. First family to ha. Pati yung, uh, yung malapit mo ng mamatay na kamag-anak. That is rules on furlough. And the last one, you cannot join the funeral procession. Or yung kapag, alam nyo yung ililibing na siya, bawal kang pumunta. So, pupunta ka lang sa lamay. Yes, may tanong ka? Yung barkada ko kasi, ma'am, yung nakulong, ma'am, tapos namatayan siya ng magulang, ma'am, sunod-sunod. Oh. Isang beses lang siya pin pinapunta, ma'am. Oh, sa mama niya, ma'am. Oo, oh, oh, minsan lang talaga. Isang beses lang talaga, ma'am. Yes. Okay po, ma'am, thank you. Ah, Naas ko lang po. Okay. 
weekend confinement. Ito sa ibang bansa, meron sila tinatawag na weekend confinement. The offender are allowed to retain current employment and permit sentences to be served during weekends. That is weekend confinement. Sa ibang bansa, ganito. Uh, magtatrabaho sila Monday to Friday, tapos Saturday, Saturday Sunday, ma makukulong sila. Ayan, yan ang weekend confinement. Sa Philippines, wala tayong ganyan. Sipin mo, Saturday, Sunday ka lang makukulong. Pero Monday to Friday kasi, nakasupervise sila sa mga, kung sino mo nagsusupervise sa system nila ng correction. And then, uh, magtatrabaho lang sila ng Monday to Friday. And then, pagdating ng Sabado at Linggo, kailangan makulong sila. Ayan. Expungement, this is the process by which the record of crime, conviction is destroyed or sealed after the exp expiration of statutory required time. Uh, expungement, ito yung sinisira na yung mga crime records kapag na-expired na lahat-lahat. Ito, penal servitude or forced labor, a punishment which consists of keeping an offender in confinement and compelling him to labor. Ito yung uh, kinukulong mo sila tapos pinapagtrabaho mo. Ang tawag doon ay forced labor or penal servitude. Rehabilitation, ayan, a program activity directed to restore an inmate's self-respect, thereby making him a law-abiding citizen after serving his sentence. So, nire-rehabilitate sila. Through this rehabilitation, nire-restore mo yung self-respect nila or respect for themselves and for the others. And then, making them as a law-abiding citizens. Okay, ito. Anong pinagkaiba ng safekeeping, determinate sentence, and indeterminate sentence? Safekeeping, it means the temporary custody of person for his own protection, safety, or care. Security from harm, injury, or danger for liability he has committed. So, ang safekeeping, uh, or minsan kasi, kinukulong ang isang tao, hindi dahil uh, magkakaroon ng investigation sa kanya, or uh, paparusahan siya. Minsan, sinisafe-keep lang siya. For example, witness siya. Okay. Witness ka ng isang crime. E kaso yung witness ng crime, ang na-witness mong crime is uh, about dun sa mga drug lords. Kung hindi ka kukunin ng kapulisan at para ikulong ka muna sa kanilang custody or dalhin ka muna sa kanilang custody, pwede, pwede kang mamatay. Okay. Ang process o yung tawag doon sa process na kukunin ka ng mga uh, authorities uh, for the purpose of your own safety or protection, then po, ang tawag natin doon ay safe keeping. Usually, ginagawa yan sa mga witnesses or yung mga related doon sa mga big crimes tapos pwedeng maging uh, susi siya para madaba yung mga big person or yung mga alam nyo nang malakas ang kapet or malaki ang crime na ginagawa. Safekeeping ang tawag doon. Pero dito yung tawag na determinate and indeterminate sentence. Determinate sentence, it means fixed period. Fixed period yung uh, mismong uh, sentence mo or yung punishment mo. For example, 12 years. 12 years kang makulong. Ang tinatawag naman nating indeterminate sentence, it means meron siyang minimum and maximum period. For example, minimum of 12 years and maximum of 20 years. Ibig sabihin, between 12 years to 20 years, yun ang isaserve mo sa loob ng kulungan. That is indeterminate sentence. So, mamibig sabihin ba ng indeterminate sentence? Uh, wala siyang fixed period na katulad ng... 12, ng determinate na 12 years, wala. So, malalaman lang kung hanggang kailan siya mag, uh, makukulong doon sa pagitan ng minimum niya na 12 years to 20 years. Pwede rin po bang 6 years to 12 years? Yes, pwede. Depende sa kung ano ang kaso na meron ka or penalty na binigay sa iyo ng korte. So, that is indeterminate sentence and determinate sentence. Okay, historical perspective muna tayo. So, in the 13th century, a criminal could avoid punishment by claiming refugee in church for the period of 40 days. At the end of the which time, he is compelled to leave the realm by road or path assigned to him. Noong 13th century, hindi ka nila paparusahan, kapalit, magsaserve ka sa loob ng simbahan. Yan, that is a refugees, claiming refugees inside the church. Now, in the 13th century. Noong 1468 naman sa England, ang nausong uh, punishment doon is torture. Yan yung sinasabi ko sa inyo mga barbaric system. Just imagine kung wala tayong penology, wala tayong study about the punishment, therefore hanggang ngayon siguro may torture pa rin sa atin. That is, 
Uh, noong 1468 kasi, talagang nag-legalize siyang torture. Next, in 16th century, transportation of criminals in England was authorized. At the end of the 16th century, Russia and other Euro European countries followed this system. It partially relieved overcrowding of prison. Transportation was abandoned in 1835. So, noong 16th century naman, uh, laging may transportation or parang uh, pinapag, ano sila, pinapagbangka, pinapag-travel, basta sama-sama sila. Just to, uh, what we call this, uh, to reduce the overcrowding in the prison. Diba? Kasi napaka-congested natin sa loob ng kulungan. Then next, we have noong 17th century to late 18th century, that penalty became as prevalent form of punishment. So, noong 17th century naman at late, at noong late 18th century, um, pasok or parang uh, ang umuso dito is yung death penalty. From torture to death penalty. Tara nyan. Okay, discuss ko lang to. Sabi ko nga, 13th century ang nausap dito is yung claiming refugee in the church for the period of 40 days. Yan. So, hindi ka makukulong basta mag-asa serve ka sa loob ng church. Noong 17th century, meron tayong ganito. Ayan, yung mga nauso. Yan. So, gaols or jails. These are the pre-trial facilities headed by the sheriff. Meron tayong galis. Di ba nga noong 17th century, nauso yung tinatawag nating transportation. Ayan. Ito yung long, low, narrow ship road by inmates. So, yung, ito yung tinatawag na galis. Yung galis na to, ito yung mga um, bangka. Di ba? Ship yan. Tapos, araw-araw, uh, naglalakbay dyan yung mga inmates. Yan. So, nag-round trip sila doon sa dagat na yan. Para nababawasan yung mga laman ng uh, kulungan. Galis ang tawag doon. Then, meron tayong hooks. These are the abandoned worship, aka floating hells. Yung hooks na yan. Okay? Yung hooks na yan. Ito, alam nyo yung mga, di ba, noong unang panahon, nauso yung mga gera-gera sa loob ng gera-gera. Uh, I mean, a specific country, ganyan, or yung mga sumasakop. Di ba nga si Magellan, ayan, sinakop yung gustong sakopin ng Pilipinas, ganyan. So, ganun din. Yung mga naiwang mga ships sa dagat, or yung mga warship, yan, yung mga uh, hukpong pandagat nila, yan. Dadalhin nila dyan yung mga inmates. Bakit siya sasawag na floating hells, ma'am, yung hooks na yan? Kasi yung hooks na yan, ang nangyayari dyan, matira-matibay dyan. Merong movie nga dyan eh, yung sa hooks, wherein uh, lalagay nila dyan yung mga prisoner, tapos, ang mangyayari, wala silang pagkain dun. So, parang survival of the fittest. Ka unang kakain nila dyan, yung mga daga, yan, uh, hanggang sa ipis, ganyan, hanggang sa wala na silang makain, papatayin na lang nila yung isa't isa para meron silang makain. Kasi sigurado yung mga abandoned worship na yan nasa gitna ng dagat na kahit tumalun ka, eh, mamamatay ka lang din. Yan. So, ganun ang parusa nila noon. That is hooks. Then, meron din tayong tinatawag na gulags. This is the wooden jail found in Russia, Germany, and Philippines. Gawa lang sa kahoy. Naintindihan ng mga gaols, galis, hooks, and gulags yan? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Panoorin nyo yung movie nito ng hooks na yan. Uh, nakaka... Tawag dito? Ma ma mapapaisip ka na, na grabe naman yung correction noong araw. Yan. May movie yan eh. So, no 18th century, this is the age of enlightenment. So, recognizing human dignity. na. Nagkakaroon na tayo ng karapatan. So, nawawala na yung torture. Unti-unti nawawala ang death penalty. Then, meron tayong mga early codes. We have Code of King of Hammurabi, uh, which means uh, Lex Talionis or Law of retali Retaliation. We also known as an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Ito yung kung anong ginawa sa'yo, yun ang gagawin. Kung pumatay ka, papatayin ka din nila. So, this is considered as the oldest code noon. Yung mga code, it means ito yung mga batas. Okay. Code of Kalanshaw, established on 1433, promulgated in the island of Panay and Aklan, employ harsh punishment for violation of this law. Ayan. Emphasize on family and cultural 
value sa Philippines na to. Then, we also have Code of Dracor, Draconian Code, or Code of Dracon. Ito naman, this is equivalent to Hammurabi Code to Greece. Parang uh, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth lang. First, to allow prosecute a case in the name of the injured party. And we also have the Code of Salon. Ito naman sa Code of Salon, medyo mas mabait siya compared mo dun sa Draconian Code or yung ating Hammurabi Code. Kasi, rinipild niya lahat ng mga codes ng from Draconian Code except ng homicide. Sa Code of Salon, medyo mabait nga siya. The laws must be equal, sabi niya. Hindi naman kailangan na an eye for an eye at for a tooth. So, there is a proportionality of your uh, punishment. Then, may also have the Burgundian Code. Ito naman, ito yung batas na sinusundan nila based on social classes. For example, Indio ka, uh, uh, mahirap ka ba? Kabilong ka ba dun sa mga middle class, upper class? Ayan. Values of lies according to each social class. Ayan. Primary school of penology, hindi ko na to i-elaborate pa dahil alam nyo naman to. Classical, neoclassical, and positivist Italian school. Ayan. Asian forms of punishment, we have death penalty, physical torture, social degradation, banishment, or exile. Okay, death penalty... Paano nila ginagawa yung death penalty noon? By burning, sinusunog kang buhay, beheading, pinupot, pinupugutan ka ng ulo, hanging, ayan, bibikti ka, breaking at the wheels, ayan, pillory and other forms of medieval execution. Next is physical torture. Ayan, maiming, mutilation, uh, pinuputulan ka ng body parts, whipping, uh, pinapalo ka lagi, and other inhumane or barbaric forms of inflicting pain. The next thing is social degradation. Alam niyo yung napapanood niyo sa mga K-drama, yung mga yung binabato sila ng uh, kamatis or kahit ano kapag dinadaan nila sa madaming tao, that is social degradation. Putting the the offender into shame or humiliation. Then banishment or exile, sending or putting away of an offender which was carried out either by prohibition against coming into a specified territory such as an island to where the offender has been removed. Yung banishment or exile na datnan pa natin yung sa Pilipinas. Alam niyo yung di ba nga si si Rizal pinatapon. Ayan. So ganon ang banishment or exile. Papatapong kanila dun sa isang isla wherein bawal kang pumunta dun sa isang specific place. Kaya kanila pinapatapon. And other similar forms of punishments like transportation and slavery. So methods of death penalty executed in the Philippines. So number one, we have the Gomburza. Diba? Anong nangyari kay Gomburza? O. Oh. History. What do you call this one? Ito yung sa garote. Ito yung pinaguto ah. ng ulo, ma'am. Oo, oh, yan. Garote. Mer nagkaroon tayo ng ganito noon, noong time ng Sp Spanish colonial period. Masketry. Ito, konti na lang. So, tapusin lang natin tong konting history. Then, next week, itutuloy natin yung kinaibahan ng jail at saka, yung mga different jails at saka, uh, pinal, uh, penal prison dito sa atin sa Philippines. So, Ipapa-assignment ko din yun sa inyo. Wait for my announcement. So we have Masketry. Ayan. So our national hero died due to the Alice rebell rebellion to Spanish government by or and also the drug lord Limseng. Ito yung uh, Masketry, ito yung fi by firing squad. Ayan, yung merong firing squad sa Fort Fort Bonifacio. Meron din tayong beheading nung dumating naman yung mga Japanese dito. Ayan, by the samurai sword. Meron din tayong hanging. Ah, uh, yun ito yung maglalakad sila sa platform and then after ng pagka 30 step niya, mabigla na siyang uh, tawag dito, ah uh, mabibikte. Electric chair. Ayun, Silya Electric ka. The Mon the Mountain Loop Electric Chair has claimed for more than 70 offenders convicted of the capital offenses since installation of four decades ago. So, so uso nun or ginagamit pa yung electric chair no, silya elektrika. Then, syempre, nagkaroon din tayo ng lethal injection. Yan. While the 1987 Constitution abolished death sentence, however, Congress in 1996 passed the RE-7659 as amended by RE-8177 that imposes death penalty for heinous crime by lethal injection. So, meron tayong uh, death penalty nun by the uh, use of lethal injection. Yan. Ito yun, no? Meron tayong tatlong gamot. 
when it comes to lethal injection. We have sodium pentotal, sorry, pentotal yan na, hindi ON, P, as in P, pentotal. Then we also have pancoromium bromide and potassium uh, chloride. So sodium pentotal, this is a sleep-inducing barbiturate, commonly used surger surgery to put the patient asleep. So unang kasing gagawin sa inyo, papatulugin muna kayo, that is sodium pentotal. After niyang kayong patulugin, another, uh, another drug ang ibibigay sa inyo, what we call pancoronium uh, bromide, ito naman, ipaparalyze nila yung muscles nyo. Yan. After maparalyze ng muscle nyo, lalagay na nila yung potassium chloride, which means capable of stopping your heartbeat. Ibig sabihin nyo, pinatulog muna kayo hanggang sa di na kayo makagalaw, tapos pigla na lang kayong patitigilin ng tibok ng puso nyo. That is lethal injection. So, meron bang na lethal injection sa Philippines? Oo, ma'am. Meron. Yung si Leo Ichigaray, yung nang rape ng bata. Tsaka yung dalawang Pilipino yata yun, ma'am, na... So, after nun kasi, nag-stop na din siya. Nagkaroon tayo ng suspension of the death penalty. So, kaya ngayon, di ba, pinag-iisipan din nila if ibabalik ba natin yung death penalty dito sa Philippines. Kasi sa ibang bansa, hanggang ngayon, allowed pa ang death penalty. Kasi nga, ang nangyayari, ba't na naman nila gustong ibalik yung death penalty dito sa bansa? Kasi nga, wala nang takot yung mga, ta yung mga tao dito sa, sa Pilipinas, di ba? Gawa lang sila ng gawa ng krimen kasi alam nila makakapag-escape sila. Wala nang takot or parang nawawalan kasi ng pangil yung mga batas natin dito sa Philippines. That is why wala, parang walang kwenta yung mga batas or parang gusto nilang ibalik yung lethal injection para magkaroon ng deterrence. Ano ba yung deterrence? This is the fear from punishment. Kasi kung takot ka sa punishment, therefore, hindi mo na uulitin o hindi mo gagayahin yung mga crimes na ginagawa ng ibang tao. Yeah, those are the early forms of punishment, hard labor, corporal punishment, degradation, uniformity, monotony, mass movement, and solitary confinement. Hard labor, ito yung parang penal servitude, pagtatrabahuin ka nila yun. Uh, corporal punishment, ito yung, uh, tawag dito, uh, torture. Yan. Degradation, ito yung pamamahiya. Uniformity, para pareho kayo ng ginagawa. Yan. Monotony, na para pareho kayo ng kinakain. Uh, for example, itlog. Kung itlog tayo ng isang araw, buong taon, itlog ang kakainin mo. Yun ang monotony. Mass movement, uh, para parehong pinapag... Parang nagtatrabaho. And solitary confinement, ito yung selda sa loob ka ng uh, Bartolina. Yan. Ano pinagkaiba ng corporal sa capital? Corporal punishment, this is the brutal punishment or torture. Sa capital naman, ito yung death penalty. Like the firing squad, garote, beheading, and electrocution. Okay, wag na yan muna. Okay, so that ends my discussion for today. The next meeting, um, magdi-discuss tayo about the uh, jails at saka, tawag dito, jails and pri uh, prison dito sa Philippines. So, kinat ko muna para bigyan ko muna kayo ng preview about the correction. Okay, open your cameras and I will tell you your uh, assignment. Hindi kasi siya nakapost sa mismong...